We turn now to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18 to 21. We know that no one who is born of God sins, but he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come, and has given us understanding, in order that we might know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. Again, John comes back to his theme of those who are born of God, not sinning, and the opposite of not sinning is keeping God's commandments. He who was born of God keeps him. Now that could mean two things in verse 18, and both of which are true that the reason why the one who is born of God does not sin is because he who is begotten of God, Jesus, keeps him from falling. Now, it is also true that he keeps himself, as some translations read that verse. He who is born of God keeps himself, and therefore the evil one does not touch him. Now, both these things are true, as we have seen concerning the human responsibility and the divine part, God's part and man's part. Both together result in our being kept from falling. We are not kept from falling merely because God does something without any part on our side. If that were the case, then there would be no person who calls himself a believer anywhere in the world who ever falls, because God would do his part perfectly. Why is it that the vast majority of people who call themselves believers are perpetually falling? Not because Jesus cannot keep them from falling, but they do not keep themselves. There has to be a, a cooperation between God and man. Jesus did not say that I shall lead you as a machine. But he said, take my yoke upon you. One end of the yoke is upon his neck, and the other end of the yoke is upon our neck. It's like a yoke upon the necks of two bullocks. Both have to do their part, and we can be sure that Jesus will do his part. He's utterly faithful. The problem is when we don't do our part. And so, it is true that Jesus keeps us. It is also true that we have to keep ourselves. And so, verse 18 has both meanings. No one who is born of God sins, and here is the reason. Because he who is begotten of God, Jesus, keeps him. And it is also true, he who is born of God keeps himself. Therefore, the evil one, the devil, cannot and does not touch him. Just think, dear friends, of a life where the evil one cannot and does not touch you. What a life to live in this evil world. We are told in verse 19 that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And the church is a group of people who have been called out from the world, out from the power of the evil one, to live in such a relationship with God that the evil one cannot and does not touch them. But this is possible only if we believe that Jesus can keep us and if we keep ourselves. Now, when you turn to the epistle of Jude, you read both these things there too. Jude verse 24, there is a tremendous promise that he, Jesus, is able to keep you from stumbling, able to keep you from falling. That is God's part. He is able to keep you from falling. But before he gives that promise, he gives them an exhortation in verse 21 of Jude, keep yourselves in the love of God. Now, when you put both these verses together, you have one exhortation and one promise. The exhortation is, keep yourselves in the love of God. We are to keep ourselves. And the promise in verse 24 is, Jesus is able to keep us from falling. There you have the perfect balance as found everywhere in Scripture 
between man's part, verse 21, keep yourself, and God's part, verse 24, he's able to keep you. The same thing we see in 1 John 5.18, he who is begotten of God will keep you, and he who is born of God, you are born of God, keep yourself. And as there is that cooperation, as your submission is complete to the Lordship of Christ, the evil one will not touch you. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one, but we are of God. And the Son of God has come, verse 20, and he has given us understanding in order that we might know him who is true, that is, the true God. And we are in him who is true, the true God, and in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. To be in him, not just to know about him. To know him is to be in him, we read in verse 20. To be in God, to be related to him in such a way that just like we speak about our, the members of our human body as being in our body, vitally connected to the head by internal nerves and tendons, in the same way that we are in God, vitally connected to His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And when we are vitally connected to Him inwardly like that, and the power of His Spirit flows down to us, communicating His nature to us, as the life flows from the head to the members, then He keeps us. But we are to keep ourselves in the body. That is our responsibility. Jesus said, that no one can pluck us out of the Father's hand or out of his hand. John 10:28 and 29. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. And my Father is greater than I. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. It is true. No demon, no man can snatch us out of the hand of the Father or of the hand of Jesus. But... We ourselves can jump out of his hand. We ourselves can get out of his hand out of our own free will. It's true that there's no demon or no man in the world that can ever remove us from Christ, but we ourselves can. That's why we are to keep ourselves in the love of God. And then he is able to keep us. If we keep ourselves in his hand, he is able to keep us. This is the balanced teaching of Scripture. He is able to keep us if we keep ourselves in his hand. If we allow that yoke to come upon our neck and submit to his lordship, he can keep us. And he is able to keep us from all the power of the enemy. And that's why the same thing is repeated in verse 21. Little children, guard yourselves from idols. He is able to keep you. He who is begotten of God can keep you, verse 18. But you have to do your part. Little children, verse 21. Guard yourselves from idols. Many heresies have been born because one emphasis of Scripture has been taken exclusively. Some people believe that the Lord will keep us, and they give up all their own responsibility. There are others who say we have to keep ourselves and keep on struggling in tension and in strain, having no faith that God can keep them. But the balanced teaching of Scripture is found in both truths together. He is able to keep us from sinning, in such a way that the evil one will not touch us if we will guard ourselves from idols. Little children. It doesn't say he will guard you from idols. It says you guard yourself from idols. If you go to a man who is an idol worshipper and he comes to faith in Christ, you would not tell him that God would come down and destroy those idols in his house. No, you would tell him you take those idols and destroy them. In exactly the same way, here is a word written to believers. Can believers have idols? Yes, they can. For what is an idol? Anything that takes the place of God in your life. Anything that takes number one place in your life. It may be your job. It may be your family. It may be your money. In the case of one rich young ruler who came to Jesus, his idol was his money. It may be pleasure. It may be ease. It may be anything. It may be honor and position that you're seeking. That's an idol. Keep yourself from idols. But if you allow those idols to remain in your heart, then you cannot expect God to keep you from sinning. But if you destroy those idols, everything that hinders you from putting God first and foremost and supreme and complete in your heart, if you destroy those things, the word of God is true, that he 
will keep you from sin and the evil one will not be able to touch you.